I want to solve the problem that we looked at right at the end of class yesterday. And when we looked at this in class, we started by making a sketch of the situation. So let's begin with that. A car passes through an intersection traveling at 56 kilometers per hour. A second car traveling at 70 kilometers per hour passes through the same intersection 6.65 seconds later. How long will it be before the second car passes the first? And where will they be when this occurs? Both of these cars are traveling at constant velocity. The sketch I'm going to make will be, well, we could first make a very crude sketch. We could have, uh, here's the first car. Fancy, huh? Um, 56.0 kilometers per hour is its velocity. The second car is behind it. Going at 70 kilometers per hour. Uh, let's. This could be the instant at which the first car passes some point in the intersection. And 6.65 seconds later, the second car does that. In a short time, we'll figure out how far the second car must have been behind the first. But before I do that, I want to make a graph of this situation, the motion that's going on here. And this will be an x versus t graph. And I'm not going to put units on it. I'm not going to get quantitative with my graph at all. But I'm going to let the x equals 0 position be the intersection that the first car is passing through. And at time 0, which is right where these axes cross, the first car is there, and then it moves forward after that from that point. So here's the first car. And there's the graph of its motion. And this is the 56.0 kilometer per hour car. That's the slope of its graph. The second car is presumably traveling at 70 kilometers hour per hour for the same, at the same time this one's going at 56, or I can assume that without messing up the problem. But it doesn't pass through the intersection until 6.65 seconds. So I'll label that point there. That's when the second car passes through the intersection, and it's going faster, which means it has a steeper slope on its velocity curve. And I made my graph a little too crowded here, but um, somewhere up there in the clouds, well, higher on the XT graph than I can draw here, is where these two learn lines are going to cross. Now, a couple of preliminary things that I want to do for this one is that uh, I want to convert the speeds. I've got a time here in seconds, and seconds are convenient units for time, but I've got these both these velocities or speeds in kilometers per hour. So I'm going to convert those, and I'll show you the method for converting units correctly. We've done this in class a little bit. But 56 kilometers per hour times 1,000 meters per kilometer times, let's see, what have we got? Hour on the bottom, one hour over 3,600 seconds. And you can see what will happen to the units that I don't want. The uh, hours go away, and I'll end up with meters per second. And 56 kilometers per hour happens to be... 15.6 meters per second. The 70 kilometers per hour, I would do the same thing with. So convert the units. 1,000 meters per kilometer. One hour over 3,600 seconds. And this one is equal to 19.4 meters per second. Okay. Now, if the faster car is going that fast, 
and it was traveling for 6.65 seconds before it gets to the intersection. I can just multiply these two things together to figure out how far back it was. And what I'm using on this calculation is just the distance equals rate times time equation for that second car. It's going 19.4 meters per second for 6.65 seconds. And it was 129 meters behind the intersection. That means this number right down here is minus 129 meters. Now, let me show you how these will work into our constant velocity equations. The x equation we had for constant velocity equation, <coughs> the general one, looks like this. x naught plus v naught x or vx naught times t. In this case, I've got two different cars, so I need to split this up into two things. So I'm going to say for the slow car, which I'm going to designate as car 1, it'll be x1 equals x0 for car 1 plus uh, v0 x for car 1. And I could maybe put commas between those subscripts on there so I can distinguish them. Well, I know that this, whoops, times t, forgot that little detail. I know that this car, the slower car, the 56 kilometer per hour car is going uh, whoops, I converted that. It's going 15.6 meters per second. So cross that thing out. Uh, what else do I know? I know that x naught for car 1 is equal to 0. It's passing through the intersection at time 0. So for that car, the equation becomes x1 is equal to 15.6 meters per second times t. There's its x versus t equation of motion. For the fast car, Call this car 2. I would just have x2 is x0 for car 2 plus v0 x for car 2 times t. And on this one, I know that it's constant velocity, so v0 x for car 2. Actually, we didn't have knots on these with constant velocity, but that's okay. Anyway, it's constant velocity is 19.4 meters per second and its initial position is what I figured out up here. Um, this is a negative distance. It's behind the intersection at this time. So x naught for car 2 is minus 129 meters. So its equation of motion will be this. x2 is going to be minus 129 meters plus 19.4 meters per second times t. Notice I've got equations everywhere, or not just equations, I've got units everywhere in my equations that I do these things with. Okay, so how do I solve this? Well, what I need to do is find where and when these two things happen to be at the same point. When car 2 catches car 1, here's what's going to be true. I'll have that x1 is equal to x2. That'll happen at some point in time. So if I just set x1 equal to x2, and solve for t, that'll tell me when it happens. And that's the first thing I want to figure out, is how long will it be before the second car passes the first. So, we've got our equations for x1 and x2, which you can't see right now. Got our equations for x1 and x2. 
if I just set these two equal to each other, replacing x1 with this, replacing x2 with this, we'll have a solution, or at least an equation we can solve. So I just say x1 equals x2. What that really implies is 15.6 meters per second times t equals minus 129 meters plus 19.4 meters per second times t. Now I'm going to do probably two algebra steps at once here. I'm going to bring this 120, minus 129 meters across, change its sign. I'll bring this across too and I'll get 129 meters is equal to 19.4 meters per second times t minus 15.6 meters per second times t or 129 meters is equal to 19.4 minus 15.6 that would be 3.4 plus 0.4 looks like 3.8 meters per second times t or 129 meters divided by 3.8 meters per second is equal to t and that will give me 33.9 seconds that's how it long how long it takes for the second car to pass the first now, where does that happen? Well, the first car's equation of motion is this. x1 equals 15.6 meters per second times t. That's the t. So, at that time, the distance will be 15.6 meters per second times 33.9 seconds. The answer I get for that is 529 meters. So that's the way you solve that problem. Now, see if you can spot the place on this page where I made a mistake with significant figures.